Now, just about every website we create ends up having some kind of testimonials on it. Of course, you can build all those out statically page by page, but one way to make that system even better is to set up a custom post type for your testimonials. This makes it really easy to add testimonials in the future, and inside of your content, you can query all these dynamically. This gives you the ability to show different testimonials on different parts of your website dynamically and bring those in through things like categories or tags. This is a really scalable system that makes websites that much better. So if you're interested in seeing how that works here inside of Generate Press and Generate Blocks, stick around and let me show you how it's done. Now, because several of you have commented that you enjoy when I put some of the design parts of these tutorials in, I'm gonna go ahead and work through all my design process in this. But if you're just here to see how the functionality works, there are timestamps listed below where you can jump right to where I start connecting in all the dynamic data. But first, let's go ahead and set up what this testimonial section is gonna look like. Here, I'm just gonna do this in a demo page and we'll call this dynamic testimonials. I think for this, what I wanna do is a dark section. So I'm gonna add a section in here, go to the background colors and we'll choose this dark blue color. I wanna give myself a little bit of extra padding. So we're gonna change this to a bigger setting for my padding. And what I have in mind here is a section where on the left-hand side, I have a little bit of text and then on the right hand side, there's three columns of cards with testimonials in it. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the grid block and we're gonna do this one where we have a smaller column on the left and a bigger one on the right. Now we do want a little gap in between of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it 60 pixels a gap. And here in this section, I'm gonna go ahead and set our text color to white so it will show up on this dark background. The first thing I'm gonna add is a headline. This can be see what they say, dot, dot, dot. And maybe we have a little bit of text underneath that. Now this heading is a little bit big for my taste. So I'm gonna use one of my global styles to make it a little bit smaller. And that should work pretty well for that column. Now over here, we're gonna want our three testimonial cards. So you'd think we're gonna put in a query loop block here, but because we haven't set up the custom post type or any of the custom fields yet, I'm gonna go ahead and just design this with a regular grid block and we'll come back in and swap it all out here in just a bit. So here I'm gonna do a grid and we'll do a three column grid. We do want a little bit of gap between those. And once I have that set up, I'll usually go ahead and delete these extras so I can focus just on building one out and then we can duplicate it. So what I have in mind for these cards is a white card with an image that stretches the full width here their testimonial underneath it with their name and their company name. So we'll go ahead and give this card a white background and maybe a little bit of border radius. The first thing in here is gonna be the image. So for now, I'll just do a static image. I do have some images already uploaded. We'll bring that in. Underneath that is gonna be the actual testimonial, the name and the company name, but I'm gonna want some padding in there. So I'm gonna add a container first and we'll go ahead and give it maybe 24 pixels of padding inside of there. The next thing I'm gonna want is the actual testimonial text. So we'll go here and we need to change this entire container's content to black text. In here, we'll drop in some website Ipsum for the placeholder for the testimonial itself. Underneath it, we'll do another headline block and this can be for the person's name, person's name. And underneath it, we'll do another headline, and this can be a paragraph for the company name. Now for the company name, I probably wanna make it smaller, so I'm gonna use one of my global styles I have set up for extra small body text. And to de-emphasize it a little bit more, we'll go ahead and change this text to a lighter gray color. I also wanna kinda of group this person's name and the company name together, so I'm gonna get rid of some of this bottom margin that's on there by default with my paragraphs. We'll go with something like four pixels. Now, it's not immediately clear that this is a testimonial, even though we have a person's image and there will be a quote in here. I think what would help is having some kind of visual cue that this is a testimonial. So what I've done is gone ahead and set up a SVG icon that we can add in between this text and the image. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add another headline block in here. We'll change this to a div since it's really not gonna have any content in it. And we'll scroll down here to the icon and paste that in. So you can see I have this little quote mark. 
We'll go ahead and remove the text here and we'll make it 2M, which will bring up the size quite a bit. Now, what I think we need to do is actually have this overlap the photo just a little bit, just to kind of bring these two sections together. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this container that I put all the padding on, and I'm gonna get rid of the top padding, make it zero, which will push this all the way to the top there. And now I can grab this icon and maybe do 16 pixels of negative margin, which will bring it up. And we probably need about 16 on the bottom just to space this testimonial out a little bit. So with that, I think it's a whole lot easier to tell that this is actually a testimonial from a customer. Just to see what these are gonna look like, I'll go ahead and duplicate this a couple times so we can get the full effect. Now we are gonna to have to worry about the responsive settings, but since we're gonna to have to rebuild portions of this with the dynamic content, we'll just worry about desktop now that we've got all of our data in place where we can start filling out our custom post type. Now, if you were building something really complex, you'd probably wanna make a list of all the fields you're gonna to have to create, but we only have a few things here, so I think we can commit it to memory. We're gonna need the photo of the person, we're gonna need their actual testimonial, we're gonna need their name and their company name. Now, every post is gonna to have to have a title, so for me, I think we'll just use the person's name as the title of the post, and we'll create custom fields for everything else. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and publish what we've done and jump back into the back end. To create all this dynamic data, we're going to use ACF. So here under ACF, I'm going to first create the post type. We'll hit the add new button. And for the plural label, we'll call this testimonials. And for the singular testimonial, and it's automatically going to give us the post type key. Now we are gonna to wanna to do some advanced filtering with taxonomies eventually. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this up to have the tag taxonomy based inside of this custom post type. We'll go ahead and leave this on as public. And I do wanna do some of these advanced configuration settings. Here in the advanced settings, I wanna get rid of the editor that comes in by default and the featured image since I'm gonna use custom fields for all those things. Now that we have all that, we'll go ahead and hit save changes. And we can see over here in our mini bar that we've got our testimonials created. Now we need to go ahead and set up the custom fields we're gonna need inside of these testimonials. For that, under ACF, we'll go to field groups and we'll go to add new. I'll call this testimonial fields and we'll go down here into the settings and we'll make sure this is set for if the post type is equal to testimonial. Go ahead and save our progress and we'll open up our fields here. So now we need to remember what all fields we need. Well, first one we need is the image. So for the field type, we're gonna go ahead and choose image and we can just call this testimonial image and it's automatically gonna give us a field name here and under the return format, we need to change this to image URL. The next thing we're gonna need is our actual text for our testimonial and for that we'll use text area and we'll call this testimonial text. Again it will go ahead and give us our field name and the last one we need is the company name. So for this one we'll just do regular text and we'll do testimonial company name. Now that we got all those fields set up we can jump over here into our testimonials and start setting up some of our posts so we'll have dynamic data to bring in. So I'm gonna go ahead and add one of these in here and then I'll fast forward through doing the rest. So for the first one, we'll call her Melinda Smith. We'll go in to add an image and we'll grab Melinda's photo. Inside the testimonial text, we're just gonna do some website Ipsum. And for the company name, we'll call it Melinda's Candy. Now we can go ahead and hit publish on this testimonial. And like I said, I need to create a couple more. So I'll fast forward through doing that. Okay, now that we have all of our testimonials set up in here, we can go back in and start connecting all that dynamic data. So we'll go back to our pages and we'll open up our dynamic testimonials. Just to make sure we have all this in case we mess anything up, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this outermost container and duplicate it just so we have a copy down here below and we can start working with this one. So we'll go ahead and open up this list view so we can see what we're working with. Inside of this second container here inside of our grid 
is actually where we need our query loop to replace this grid that's in there now. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a new block and we'll type in query loop and we can start blank. Now for our query itself, we're gonna to wanna to query testimonials and post per page, we're just gonna want three because we don't ever want more than three showing here. Now inside that query loop, we have our grid, which we need to remember we wanna put 20 pixels a gap to match what we had before. And inside that is our post template. Now to get this to have three, just like we had before, we need to go ahead and set that to 33%. Now, since we've already done all this design work, what I'm gonna do is go in here into this grid and grab this first container and we're gonna copy this block. We'll go inside of this post template here, just put in a paragraph and paste in that block. So now you can see we've pasted that in. Of course, because this was set to 33% width, we need to go down here and actually set this to 100 so it fills in the full container. Now that we have that duplicated in here, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this grid and delete it so we don't get confused. And now we can start connecting in all of our dynamic data. Now to do this, we're actually gonna to need to know the name of all the fields that we created. So I'm gonna go back here to the back end under ACF and field groups. And under our testimonial fields, I'm gonna hit edit because we're gonna need access to all of these names here. And it's a whole lot easier to copy and paste to make sure that we don't make any mistakes while typing it in. So first we'll do the image. Here for the image, I'm gonna select it and go down to enable dynamic data and turn that on. Under the image source, I'm gonna do post meta. And for the post meta field, I need to grab the field name for the image, which is this one here. We'll go ahead and click that and that will copy it to our clipboard. We'll go back in here to our design and under the post meta field, I'll paste that in and click add testimonial image. Here for the actual testimonial text, again, we're gonna select enable dynamic data. We're gonna choose the content source of post meta and we're gonna go in here to our testimonial text, copy that name and paste it in. Now for the person's name, we're actually gonna be using the title of the post. So we'll go into our content source and choose title and we can see those changed over to each individual's name. Lastly, under the company name, we'll enable the dynamic data, choose post meta, and we'll grab this testimonial company name text and paste it in. Now that we got all those in there, we'll go ahead and hit update and view this on the front end. And we can see it is bringing in each one of their images, their text from their testimonial, their name, and their company name. Somehow my headline here has been overridden by dark text, so we do need to fix that. And I also think we need to make all the images the same height. So let's go ahead and make those changes. So first we'll grab this image and we can go up here to height and choose a height for it. We're gonna say maybe 150 pixels for now. We can play with that. And we need to make sure to set this object fit to cover. We also want to grab this headline here and make sure the text was set to white. We can go ahead and do that and hit update and we'll refresh on the front end again. And we can see this is actually not stretching the image to the full width. We also have to determine if this is the appropriate height. To me, it looks a little bit short and we need it to go the full width. So I'm gonna go back in here, click on our image again, and we'll set our width to 100, and we'll change this pixels to percent, and maybe we go with 200 pixels in height. Go ahead and update those changes, refresh on the front end, and we can see now all those images line up perfectly. So we're really close to having this wrapped up now. We just need to go through the mobile settings. So in tablet mode, this column is way too squished and three across just isn't gonna work. So I'm gonna grab this first container here where our left column is, and instead of 25%, let's do 33%. And for the container we wanna set next to it, since this first one was 33, we'll make this one 66. Now for each one of these individual testimonials, I think I just wanna make them take up the full width. So I'm gonna change that to 100%, and we need to make sure that now we have some vertical gap in between them. So we'll do maybe 20 pixels of vertical gap. And we can see that's just stacking those all on top of each other. I think that will work for tablet. And here in mobile, we want everything to take up 100%. 
So I think we're gonna work just fine on that. We'll go ahead and update this, refresh it on the front end, and we'll jump into the inspector to see how this works in responsive settings. Change this to 100%. And as we squish this in here, we can see now once we get to tablet, these stack on top of each other and it all looks pretty nice. And as we get down to mobile, they're all stacking on top of each other. We just need a little bit of gap here, which is one thing I forgot. So here in this first grid, we can change the vertical gap in between this text and the cards to something maybe like 40 pixels. Go ahead and hit update once again, and we'll refresh it. So just like that, we have all of our responsive settings set up and everything is working perfectly. Now I do wanna take this a step further to show you how this can be really helpful to bring in taxonomies into this equation, especially when you have lots of testimonials and lots of content on your site. So let me give you an example. Let's say we had a hundred different testimonials on this site and a bunch of different services we provide. We might wanna show these testimonials inside of different pages using different context. So for instance, if somebody was on our web design page, we might wanna show testimonials that feature comments about our web design services. If it was on our SEO page, we might want testimonials that talk about our SEO services. We might also wanna filter these down to where the reviews that were left might be talking about things like price or communication. You'll have to decide what all kind of filters you want, but I'm gonna show you how that works in here and it's really easy to set up. So you can have an entire system built in here to show all of your testimonials dynamically based on the type of context. So again, we're gonna jump into the back end. We're gonna go into our testimonials and view all of these here. Because these are set up as tags, we can do the quick edit and we can add some tags. So we can say under Stephanie's, maybe she was website design, we'll add a comma, and we'll say she talked about our price. So we'll go ahead and update there. For James, we'll say he was SEO and he talked about communication. Hit update. And for Melinda, we'll say she was also SEO and she talked about price. So we'll go ahead and hit update on that. Now, if we go back into the editor, we'll have to refresh this page since we added all those tags in there. We can go ahead and click on our query loop block, which is just inside here, and we can add some parameters to it. So here I'm gonna hit add parameter, and then I'm gonna choose include taxonomy. So here under taxonomy, we'll choose taxonomy, and we'll pretend this is our SEO page. So under here, we can do tags, and then we can do the tag of SEO. So now when we update this and we view it on the front end again, we can see it's only showing these two which I tagged with SEO. So it would be perfect to show just the SEO related testimonials on our SEO page. Of course, if we went back in here and instead of SEO, we said price and hit update, refresh it on the front end, and now we're just gonna see the testimonials that talk about our price. So you can see how you could use all kinds of different filters to show the right testimonials in the right place of your website. Obviously, I just use services and some keywords in there as an example. You can do this in all kinds of different ways to make sure you're showing the right testimonials at the right time. You can also combine these by in the select terms, instead of just doing price, you could do price and SEO. And this works really well if you have tons of testimonials where you're gonna have plenty to choose from in all these different scenarios. So it's really gonna depend on how you're breaking these things down and how many different testimonials you have. I'd definitely be curious to know if this is something you're already doing on your builds or if this is something you're considering adding now that you've seen this video. It's a really great way to bring testimonials in more dynamically and get more use out of them. Social proof is so important on our website, so it's worth taking a few extra minutes to set up this system especially knowing that all you have to do is fill in a couple fields to be able to bring new testimonials in. This gives your clients the ability to add testimonials on the fly if they get into the back end of their website and do edits. If you wanna check out a few more Generate Blocks and Generate Press tutorials, there should be some cards popping up here. And if you'd like to come hang out with us inside the admin bar, you can click the link down in the description and join about 7,000 other website developers who are sharing tips and tricks just like this.